Hello, this is Taylor with Music Shop 360. For today's tutorial, we will be reviewing how to create a trade-in within the system. As you can see, we're logged into the register here. We're ready to go. So the very first thing I want to do is just be aware that in order to conduct a trade-in, you do need to be signed into the register. Very first thing is we'll want to bring in our customer. So we'll say McKinley is our customer today. Once you've got the customer pulled up, you'll want to just go ahead and access the trade-in module by clicking this, um, this hot link right here. So trade-in. And you can see the very first thing is that uh, we've got some customer information here. Some states do require that you supply driver's license or identification information whenever you're taking a trade in. And so we do have that available to you. You can go ahead and upload that. You can open up a camera and uh, take the image that way as well. So you uh, do have the ability to identify customers via official uh, state identification if you'd like to do that. And then uh, you'll see this is where we can add in items. And then one of my favorite things about trade-in is this little tool right here. So one of the nice things is when you have a customer pulled up, it's actually going to pull up their purchase history with you. So let's say McKinley purchased this uh, tailor from us you know, a year ago or two years ago or what have you, it's going to pull it up right here. Uh, when you do that, it makes it nice because it does bring in, you know, if you've got like an image and descriptions and um, serial number and that sort of thing, it will actually pre-populate that or, or repopulate that for you. Um, in many instances, it's really not going to be something from her purchase history. Maybe she bought it somewhere else or what have you. So we'll go and we'll take out that uh, Taylor guitar here. Now, if it is an item that maybe you've carried in the past, you could you could check that by scanning its barcode. If it is in your system, you can go ahead and just use the product information that you already have built out there. But in uh, um, for our purposes today, we'll just say that this is a brand new product. We've never carried it before. Maybe it's something vintage. It's a one-off, that sort of thing. So we're not going to have any product information in our system for it. What you'll want to do in that case is you'll just simply click this little plus button right here. Now you can see it opens up a new product ad. This is quite different, quite more basic, uh, substantially more basic than our um, add new product module. The idea here is we want to get McKinley in and out as quickly as possible. If that's you know what our goal is, you know we want to provide a really succinct, smooth um, customer experience here. And so the idea here again is just collect some basic information about the product, and then we'll go back in later and kind of spruce it up and get it get it ready to go online and reverb and all those different things. So you can put in as much or as little information as you want here. We'll call this our trade. Uh, oops, our uh, trade-in S2 product. And then again, if I want to, I can go supply the rest of the information here. I would suggest that you don't really need to do that, though. Uh, really, what you do need to do here is you'll want to put in the retail price. Um, so this is one thing that I do encourage you to fill out. We'll just say we are going to charge 250 bucks for this product when we uh, put it back out on our shelves. So I'll go ahead and I'll designate that there, and I'll go ahead and hit Save Product. Okay, now that item is now brought into the trade-in. One of the things that you'll want to make sure you do, it won't let you advance past here unless you put in a quantity. Now, most of the time this is going to be one, but in case they're bringing in twosies or, th you know, they got three or four, you can certainly accommodate that through the system as well. Trade in value. This is the amount of credit or um, cash or whatever method of payment we're going to give back to this customer. This is the amount we'll want to designate here. So I'll just say it's half of what we're going to be charging somebody. It's 125 bucks. Okay, now one of the nice things is as soon as we put in that information, we can hit go ahead and uh, create trade in. It's going to bring that credit into the till. The idea here is that you want to have options. You want to give your customers options. So maybe it's, hey, we're just going to give you $125 store credit. Maybe I want to put that onto a gift card. Maybe I just want to pay you cash or cut you a check or what have you. You'll, you'll have the ability to do that. But the other option that you can do is maybe legitimately she's come in. She just wants to trade up. She wants to, to get into a nicer product. Um, we can do that. So all we would do in this case is we've got the $125 credit sitting on, on this transaction. But we'll pull in this Tama Snare. Say she's upgrading uh, to that uh, product. You can see what it does. It brings in the retail price of the Tama, but it also has the $125 credit from her trade-in. That's going to populate onto the receipt and the transaction. This will all show up in the transaction details. You'll have visibility on tracking and tracking on all these uh, processes. So uh, we've got that here. And at this point, we'll go ahead and we'll just cash the, uh, we'll, we'll collect payment. So we'll say she's paying cash. 
Once we've done that and we complete the transaction, uh, we definitely don't need a receipt for our test here, but we're done. Uh, we've sold the new Tama snare to the customer. We've taken the trade in and McKinley is out having uh, a great time with her new stair- snare drum. Um, and so that's uh, kind of the way that you conduct a trade-in when you have a customer. Now, we're not finished, right? We have taken in this old trade-in item too. We're going to want to resell the product. So really the next step for us, and maybe you do this immediately, or maybe you do it the next day, or you have somebody who's in charge of this. But eventually what you're going to want to do to get that product ready to resell, you'll want to identify it in your inventory. So we'll just simply come over here to inventory. We're going to click on products. And because it's the most recent item we've created, it's going to be at the top of our list here. So you can see as it populates, we have trade-in test two. Okay, so this is our uh, this is our trade in uh, that we just created. So here it is. We'll pull it up now. Just like any other product that you're adding into the system, there's some key things you'll want to identify here. So you'll want to add imaging. You'll want to add your descriptions. If this is something you want to push to reverb, come in here, turn the reverb listing to on. Um, you'll also want to set your departments. Really, the same way you would treat a new product getting that into the system is how you'll want to treat this. Um, you know, you'll want to make this available for sale. You can designate it on the website just through the point of sale at the store or both spots there. I guess what I'm saying is um, just come in here, get the product spruced up, get it pushed to your website, get it pushed to reverb, or if you want to make this available for sale, you will want to come back here and get that product cleaned up. All right. So just be aware of that, that uh, short trade in form or that short new product form that we use during the trade in, Anything you put in there will transfer here. Um, it will leave less work for you. But again, just to facilitate a quick customer experience, I'd say, you know, let's take the time now and get the product cleaned up after McKinley has, has left the store. Uh, that's essentially how you do the trade-in. Again, all the, the trade-in information will then be made available through the reporting, the product history, and everything like that. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, go ahead and reach out to support. You can reach us at this number here, 385-404-6200. Look forward to uh, hearing from you. Thank you.